decentralized finance where there are no banks. Instead, there are pieces of code that run and act as a bank. They're open to anyone. They don't require you to trust them because they're literally a piece of code running a program. If you wanted to, you could read through it and verify that it's not going to scam you. They are also censorship resistant. And lastly, they are much, much cheaper than traditional centralized finance. Decentralized finance is built on three main things. Cryptography, the blockchain technology, and smart contracts. If you don't know what these are, we highly recommend that you check out our other videos on these topics where we break these topics down so simply using stories and examples and analogies that even your grandfather could understand them. Now this is going to be a bit of a longer video, but it's a very broad and growing topic. Anyways, assuming you understand the cryptography, the blockchain, and how smart contracts work, let's dive into the five pillars of decentralized finance. Number one, stable coins. So first off, we need to understand the bridge of decentralized finance to centralized finance, and that is cryptocurrency that is matched to a real world asset. For example, DAI, Tether, and USD coin are all what we call stable coins. This is because their price is tied to the United States dollar. Think about it like this. When you buy one for $1, a new USD coin is minted. When you withdraw one, a USD coin is burned. So the coin is always worth one United States dollar. Now the purpose of this is to have a reliable way to buy and sell certain coins without having to buy and sell them. Instead, we can just trade them. Here's an example of why this might be beneficial. Let's say you bought one Ethereum at $500. Well now it's $1,000 and you wanna sell because you think it's high, you wanna take your profits. Without stable coins, you have to sell your Ethereum at a centralized exchange like Coinbase or Binance and in return, they will give you some United States 